Hello, everyone, and welcome to USMLE Domination High Yield Tutorial number 20. Let's go ahead and get started with a high yield question, as we always do. So this is a 67-year-old female presenting with sudden chest pain. She describes it as a 9 out of 10 with pain going to her back. Her pulse is 110, and the blood pressure in her right arm is elevated compared to her left. The rest of her vitals are stable. Her CT scan is shown below. What's the most likely diagnosis based on the clinical vignette and the CT scan that you see here? Is this a case of myocardial infarction, pneumothorax, aortic dissection, pulmonary embolism, or aortic coarctation? I promise we'll come back to this high yield question at the very end after we have a short tutorial on acute chest pain. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about acute chest pain, a really important topic for the USMLE, trying to you know, demystify this so that you guys all ace any questions associated with chest pain. So the most important thing with chest pain is really the history and the quality of the pain, right? So for example, things like ischemia and myocardial infarction typically present with chest heaviness or chest pressure. It's not really, you can't really pinpoint the pain. If it's like a stabbing or a pinpoint type of pain, that's not really ischemia or myocardial infarction. So oftentimes the description of the pain is often very helpful in deciding what type of chest pain there is. Physical exam can also be helpful. So for example, if you have symptoms, or, you know, on physical exam, diaphoresis, tachypnea, increased breathing, that's indicative of something that may be life-threatening. So that's very important. These are clues that something could be very sinister and you want to look for or rule out something that is potentially life-threatening. The most important test to rule out life-threatening causes by far an EKG. So if you have a clinical vignette on the USMLE describing chest pain and the EKG hasn't been ordered, that's going to be the answer. The answer is going to be the next best test is always going to be an EKG if that hasn't been ordered for a case of chest pain. So always look to see that ECG or an EKG has been ordered for acute chest pain. And I really want to talk about three, we're going to talk about a lot of causes of chest pain, but first I want to talk about three causes that you're likely to see on the USMLE that present with imaging. So they actually present with, you know, either a CT scan or a plain film, an x-ray, something like that. And those are aortic dissection, pulmonary embolism, and pneumothorax. And we'll start with aortic dissection, which represents an intimal flap within the vessel itself, right? So an intimal flap in the vessel typically presents with shearing chest pain that radiates to the back, okay? It often radiates to the back. That's a key feature that we see in aortic dissection that we don't see in a lot of other causes of chest pain. Unequal blood pressures in the arm is often a huge clue to this. So typically, one arm will have a systolic blood pressure that's greater than 20 millimeters mercury elevated compared to the other or contralateral side. That's a big clue that they're discussing aortic dissection. It's often associated with hypertension, Marfan syndrome, a bicuspid aortic valve. This, those can be clues to the underlying diagnosis of aortic dissection. And I want to show what an x-ray would look like. So this is a normal chest x-ray on the left side where you see, you know, on the midline, this, you know, you know, loosen or dark area is a tracheal column. This whole area that's relatively dark is the right lung. This is the left lung here. We have the aortic knob or the aortic arch right here. This is the board, the left heart border right here. This is part of the right heart border. Notice that this is a normal x-ray. Nothing is abnormal here. We have a pretty narrow mediastinum or this area right here. Contrast that with this case here where the mediastinum is huge, right? Like we blurred a lot of the contours of, you know, the aortic arch, the heart borders. And this mediastinum is probably like five times the width. If we you were to measure from here to here, it's probably five times the width from here to here, right? So this is what we call a wider mediastinum. It's non-specific, but it can be seen in the setting of, you know, aortic dissection or, you know, mediastinal hemorrhage or something life-threatening, right? So you see that appearance, you should be worried that something life-threatening may be going on. Not always, but for the USMLE, it can be a very sinister sign when you see a widened mediastinum on a chest x-ray. And I want to show what this looks like on a CT. So on the left side, we have a normal CT. On the right side, we have a case of an aortic dissection. And remember, on a CT, the top of the image is anterior. The bottom of the image is posterior. This black area right here is the right lung. So the left part of the image is a right lung by convention. The right part of the image right here, this black area is the left lung, okay? Uh, and this is a CT done with intravenous contrast. So that's why all these vessels are very bright. So this right here is the main pulmonary artery. And this labeled here is the, this circular area is the ascending aorta. This circular area here, put more posteriorly is a descending thoracic aorta, okay? So these are normal. It's nice, the vessels are nice and bright and they look totally normal. Contrast that with the case of aortic dissection when we have these 
linear areas running in the lumen of this bright vessel. That's an intimal flap, and that suggests an aortic dissection. We see that not only in the ascending aorta, but we also see this linear area, which is known as the intimal flap in the descending aorta, right? So this is a nice example of an aortic dis dissection that involves both the ascending and the descending aorta. So I hope that's clear. You're looking for that linear area within the lumen of the vessel, of the bright vessel, to suggest an aortic dissection. Of course, this is a life-threatening emergency that everyone should be able to recognize on the USMLE. So you should also be familiar with the Stanford and the DeBakey classification. The Stanford classification, a type A, involves only the ascending aorta. A type B involves the descending aorta, just distal to the left subclavian artery, okay? A type A is usually treated surgically. A type B is treated often with medical management like beta blockers, vasodilators. The DeBakey classification is three types, type one, type two, and type three. You can think of a type one and a type two equivalent to a type A and a type three equivalent to a type B, right? So a type A involves both the ascending and descending aorta. So in our case that I showed, that would be a Stanford type A, and it'd also be a DeBakey type one because it involved both the ascending and the descending aorta. A type two DeBakey just involves the ascending aorta and a type three DeBakey just involves a descending aorta, okay? So it's nice to know that classification for aortic dissection. I wanna to come to a pulmonary embolism, which of course presents with, you know, pleuritic type chest pain, chest pain that's, you know, worse with inspiration. Often they can have tachypnea, increased breathing rate, tachycardia, increased heart rate, can have hypoxemia. You may have respiratory alkalosis on, you know, arterial blood glass. I wanna show a normal CT first. Again, the top of the image is anterior. The bottom is posterior. And again, this is a CTA. So we've opacified the pulmonary vessels. This here, again, remember, this is the ascending aorta. This is the descending aorta. Now these linear areas here are normal. This is just, you know, artifact from, you know, the actual uh, study itself. So don't worry about this. This is just, you know, mixing artifact here. But notice that this here is a pulmonary artery. It's nice and bright. And there's nothing in the lumen of this vessel here, right? This is the main pulmonary artery branching off into the right main pulmonary artery. Contrast that here, in this case, a PE where we have, this is the ascending aorta, the descending aorta, but we have these dark areas in the lumen. This is thrombus. These are filling defects within the pulmonary artery. You see it here along the proximal aspect of the right main pulmonary artery, and then also here in the left pulmonary arterial branch here. So these are examples of pulmonary emboli, okay? So filling defects within the pulmonary vasculature consistent with pulmonary emboli. When I turn to a pneumothorax, we can present with acute chest pain, dyspnea, Often they'll have decreased breath sounds on the side of the pneumothorax, hyper to percussion on physical exam. Again, this is a normal x-ray. We can see the tracheal column, the right lung here, the left lung, the aortic arch right here, the left heart border right here, the right heart border. Notice that we can see these linear bright lines. This is the pulmonary vasculature. You can see it extending all the way to the periphery of the lung, and that's normal. You contrast that to this case of a left-sided pneumothorax, we see this line here that's outlining normal lung with air in the pleural space. If you, if you trace this line here, everything past this line or peripheral to this line has, it's just all air. There's no bright lines to suggest pulmonary vasculature, right? Like this is all dark air, which suggests pneumothorax. And we see this nice line that outlines air in the pleural space from normal lung architecture. We see we don't see that here on this side. This is just normal vasculature here, right? So a nice example of a left-sided pneumothorax on a chest x-ray. You should be very familiar with what a pneumothorax looks like on a chest x-ray for the USMLE. And I want to talk about USMLE must-know points for chest pain. I'm giving, you know, some examples of the most common things that you're likely to see for chest pain on the USMLE. Uh, we have, you know, seven entities right here. And I want to talk about the pearls or the hints that you should look for in the clinical vignette to suggest one of the diagnoses. So for an MI or a myocardial infarction, it's going to present with chest pressure or chest heaviness, tightness. Those are the words you're going to be looking for. The pain should last at least 20 to 30 minutes. If it lasts only five or 10 minutes, it's likely not an MI, okay? You'll often have, you know, elevated CKMB, cardiac enzymes, troponin levels, okay? You may have ST elevation corresponding to a particular vessel, okay, or a territory. That suggests myocardial infarction. Eric dissection, as in this case, this is pain radiating to the back, and you often see uneven blood pressure in both arms. Okay, one arm will be 20 millimeters mercury greater than another arm. That's very suggestive of aortic dissection. Tearing chest pain radiating to the back, that's the key. Pericarditis or inflammation of the pericardium, that typically presents with sharp pain. It's like a stabbing, sharp pain 
that's related to position, right? So it's often worse lying down, gets better sitting up. That's a key, right? That quality of pain that's positional is very relevant for pericarditis. Often when they show you an EKG, there may be diffuse ST elevation, right? So ST elevation involving almost every lead. That's also suggestive of acute pericarditis. PE would present with pleuritic chest pain. So chest pain worse with inspiration. You may have tachycardia, tachypnea. The D-dimer is often elevated. Those are clues for pulmonary emboli. A pneumothorax, as I showed you on the chest x-ray, often presents with dyspnea, sharp pain. Okay, it's not, you know, pressure or tightness. It's a sharp pain. Decreased breath sounds on physical exam, hyper-resonant to percussion. All that is suggestive of a pneumothorax. GERD or class gastroesophageal reflux disease, that can often happen after you eat, you know, a meal, typically in older individuals. You get chest pain that's worse when you're lying down or recumbent after a meal. It can often be relieved by antacids and sometimes even nitroglycerin, right? So some, in, some people say it gets better with nitroglycerin, some say it gets worse. So, you know, you may see that in the clinical vignette. So it's not always just ischemia. Always think about GERD as well, particularly if it's worse lying down after a meal. That can be a clue for GERD. And costochondritis or inflammation of a rib, that's the most common cause of chest pain, typically in younger people, like, you know, in their 20s or 30s. The pain is usually localized. It's a stabbing pain. It's very local. It can be reproduced if you palpate the rib or that area. That's very suggestive of costochondritis in an otherwise healthy young individual. So those are the clues that you should look for in the USMLE when you're looking at chest pain. Often the quality of the pain can be very helpful in deciphering the answer. So let's come back to this high yield question. This is a 67 year old female presenting with sudden chest pain. She describes it as a nine out of 10 with pain going to her back. Her pulse is 110. Blood pressure in her right arm is elevated compared to the left. The rest of her vitals are stable. The CT is shown below. What's the most likely diagnosis? So if we dissect this, it's, a, it's an older female. The pain is sudden and it's pain going to her back. So remember that aortic dissection is pain, tearing pain going to the back. She's tachycardic. You know, the, blood pre the, you know, the, the heart rate is higher than 100 and the blood pressure in the right arm is higher than on the left. That's another major clue, right? If the blood pressure in one arm is greater than the blood pressure in the other, that's a sign of aortic dissection, right? So the CT scan is revealing. We have this intimal flap in the ascending aorta and also the descending aorta. So this would be a Stanford A or a DeBakey type one aortic dissection. This is none other than an aortic dissection. Hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for your attention and tune in next week for another super high yield USMLE domination tutorial.